Wormwood, I hope my last video has convinced you that this valley of dullness or dryness that your patient is currently experiencing will not, by itself, give you his soul, but must be properly exploited. I will now advise you on how to exploit it. In the first place, I have always found that low periods of the human undulation provide excellent opportunities for all sensual temptation, particularly those of sex. This may surprise you because, of course, there is more physical energy and therefore more potential appetite during peak periods, but you must remember that the powers of resistance are then also at their highest. The health and spirits which you want to use in producing lust can also, unfortunately, be easily used for work or play or thought or innocent merriment. The attack is much more likely to succeed when the whole inner world is drab and cold and dreary. It is noted that valley sexuality is subtly different in quality than that of the peak much less likely to lead to that milk and water phenomenon which the humans call being in love, much more easily drawn into perversions, much less contaminated by those generous and imaginative and even spiritual accompaniments which so often render human sexuality disappointing. It is much the same with other desires of the flesh. You are much more likely to make your man an addict by pressing drink on him while he is dull and weary than by encouraging him to use it as a means of merriment among his friends while he is happy and expansive. Never forget that when we are dealing with a pleasure in its healthy and normal and satisfying form, we are, in a sense, on the enemy's ground. I know we have won many a soul through pleasure. All the same, it is his invention, not ours. He made the pleasures. Our research has so far not enabled us to produce one. All we can do is encourage the humans to take the pleasures which our enemy has made in times or in ways or in degrees which he has forbidden. Therefore, we are always moving away from the natural condition of any pleasure to the least natural, least reminiscent of its maker, and least pleasurable. An ever-increasing craving for an ever-diminishing pleasure is the formula. It's more certain, and it's got more style. To get a person's soul and give them nothing in return, that really gladdens our father's heart. And the low times are the times to really begin this process. But there is an even better way to exploit the valley. I mean through the patient's own thoughts about it. As always, the first step is to keep knowledge out of his mind. Do not allow him to suspect the law of undulation. Let him assume that the first ardors of his conversion could have been expected to last, and should have lasted forever, and that his current dryness is an equally permanent condition. Once you've got this misconception firmly affixed in his mind, there are several ways in which you might proceed. It all depends on whether your patient is the desponding type, who can be tempted to despair, or the wishful thinking type, who can be easily assured that all is well. The former is getting quite rare among the humans. If your patient should happen to belong to it, everything is quite easy. You have only to keep him out of the path of experienced Christians, an easy task nowadays, and direct his attention to the appropriate passages in scripture. Then set him to work on the desperate plan of recovering his old feelings by sheer willpower, and the game is ours. If he is of the more hopeful type, you must make him rest in his present low temperature of spirits, until he gradually becomes content with it, and it does not feel low at all. In a few weeks' time, you will have him doubting whether or not his early days of Christianity were perhaps a bit excessive. Talk to him about moderation in all things. If you can get him thinking that religion is all very well up to a point, then you can feel quite good about his soul. Moderated religion is just as good for us as no religion at all. And it is more amusing. Another possibility is a direct attack on his faith. Once you have convinced him that the valley is permanent, can you not convince him that his religious phase is going to die away just as all his other phases have in the past? Of course, there is no conceivable way to get by reason from I am losing interest in this to this is false. But as I said before, it is jargon and not reason that you must rely on. The mere word phase is likely to do the trick. I assume the creature has been through several of them before. They all have. And they always come out of them being patronizing to their past selves, not because they have decided that they were wrong, but simply because it is past. I hope you are keeping him up on the concepts of progress and development and the historical point of view, giving him lots of nice uh, coming-of-age stories to watch. People are always coming out of phases in those, aren't they? You see the idea. Keep his mind off the plain decision between true and false. Nice hazy phrases. It was a phase. I've been through all that. And don't forget the blessed word, adolescent. <laughs> 